Hello everyone, welcome back to the wood shop. This time we are going to start and I hope finish, we're going to edit it together because it's probably going to be several days. We are going to start and finish Project Stegosaurus. Project Stegosaurus involves DOS drawing me a Stegosaurus. <clears throat> um, I have a friend of mine who, uh, bless him, <clears throat> he's having twins, unlucky man. Uh, thank goodness it's not me. Good lord, could you imagine that? Two little screaming meatloafs. Yeah. Um, so my friend is having these twins. So I figured I'd, you know, there's like, is it baby warming? No, that's not right. You do housewarming and baby whatever. <clears throat> whatever. We're going to make a rattle. So to make the rattle, we're going to take our stegosaurus. I'll get you a better image. Um, we're going to take our stegosaurus, we're going to take ourselves a nice piece of one inch thick oak, little oak dowel, and we're going to make a rattle, a stegosaurus rattle. So this can be interesting. I'm not going to be able to use the table saw really. Um, maybe for simple cuts I can use table saw. Uh, I'm going to have to use the band saw which is sitting over there um, because the stego has a lot of little ridges and a lot of little stegosaurus things. So to start with, I need to find some scissors so I can cut out the stegosaurus. Hey, are you liking the video? Hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that'd be great too. Leave a comment. It helps the channel grow. So do those likes, by the way. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, Patreon is a great way to help us grow the channel. Invest in new things like new tools, new games, new adventures. So, if you like the video, hit that like button. Drop us a comment. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Just enjoy. One of the important things when you're doing something like this, because it's going to be for a little rodent style thing, is <clears throat> I got some Type Bond 3 because this stuff is safe for children. Um, and also when we finish it, um, it particularly, um, it is FDA approved for food contact. So it's FDA approved for food contact. That means if a child puts it in their mouth and chews on it, it doesn't turn the child into a mutant or whatever that does. <clears throat> so there's that. And then I need to get a, a stain for this, for this oak. And I usually would go with a standard poly. Uh, I have various kinds of polyurethane in there, but again, it's got to be kid safe. So what I'm going to do is there's this really nice um, woodworking store in town. <clears throat> and I'm going to go there and I'm going to get linseed oil stain. So basically it's just pure uh, boiled, double boiled linseed oil. It's supposed to be really good for, for this. You can use it on cutting boards. So if you can use it on cutting boards, again, food safe, therefore kid safe. That's the theory anyway. All right, let's cut out our stegosaurus. All right, <clears throat> recycle that. All right, so we have ourselves one stegosaurus. <clears throat> the important feature of our stegosaurus is this hole. That's a two and a half inch, or at least I was told it was two and a half inch hole <clears throat> that we are going to cut. And that's where the rattle pieces are gonna go. We're actually gonna create the rattle pieces out of this wood with the off cuts. We're gonna actually cut it into really small pieces. And then we're going to thread this rod up the stegosaurus's bottom, because I really don't have any other choice in the matter, and up into his body, sort of like this, to bisect the hole, um, maybe more like that. <clears throat> so then I can put that in there and tight bond glue that in really nicely. Now to do that, I don't have any drill bits nearly long enough, so I had to go pick up one. So I bought a slightly long drill bit. It's a quarter inch, which is the same as this thing here. The reality is it's probably not because nothing is ever the same size anymore. I'm just looking at it. It's going to be tight fit, but that's fine. <clears throat> so I got this drill bit. We'll probably put it in the drill press and I'm going to make myself a jig to hold my dinosaur. I can't believe I just said that. These are words you don't expect to say. Jig to hold my dinosaur. And then because we're putting the tight bond into a very tight hole, 
Um, I picked up some paint brushes so I can paint the, the glue properly. Usually I just kind of dab it in there, but in this case I actually want to make sure I get a full 360 degree seal of glue so that when a small screaming meatloaf shakes the rattle, the stick doesn't come out of the dinosaur's butt. <clears throat> Again, things you didn't think you were going to be saying in life. So our next task is going to be putting dino on. So I can't put dino like that, which would, be, would have been perfect, but he's just too big. Because they're twins, <laughs> poor silly sod, um, <laughs> because they're, they're twins, we'll have one dino here, and then we'll have one dino here. I technically have space for three dinos, which is perfect, because if I screw up one dino, I still got the wood for dino number three. Still doesn't sound like words that should be said in, in any sort of language. Um, and then what was I going to do about this hole? <sighs> I think I'm just going to poke straight through. Looks like Das was kind enough to put a hole in the middle, so that's good. Now I just need to find something to draw on that. Oh, there's my pencil. Hmm. See, some people take um, applique glue and they just spray it on there. Um, I didn't because that would mean I have to make a duplicate of this thing. And because Das hand drew this, I can't really uh, expect to get a duplicate. It would be a different dyno. And my understanding of twins is they don't, they don't abide by that, that one twin has it and the other twin doesn't stuff. Just my understanding of how kids work. Maybe not all kids, but that's my understanding of how they work. So we're just going to carefully trace our dino's shape onto the wood. The nice thing is, if these little spines don't exactly get on the, the wood, that's fine, because we'll be freehanding this on the bandsaw. So the reality is some of these spines are probably going to get lost. Hey, there's a dinosaur. Sweet. All right, I've got to put the dinosaur back on top of his dinosaur. Dino on top of dino. And then we're going to go and find a punch. All right, so I'm going to guess this is the middle of the hole. There. Sweet. Eyeball, I'll freehand the eyeball later. So there's a dinosaur on the wood. It's a bit light, but that's okay because I'm going to be right over it with while well, I'm doing the bandsaw work. So now <clears throat> let's do dino number two. Hmm. So I wanted to, I was just thinking about this. So if I, if I move this down here, kind of how I was originally doing it, one, I could probably get four dinos. But then when I'm making the initial cut, I'm working this entire board the whole time. If I pull this dyno up here, I can get a cut, be it an angle cut slightly, or maybe even a straight cut, which, or mostly straight cut. Um, I can do a, a cut, and then I'm working with a subsection of the board instead of the entire thing, because I don't want to use the, I don't want to be working on the entire thing. Okay. There you go. I got myself two stegosaurus. So first things first, we got to cut out our dinosaurs. It's gonna be fun. All right, so I've got the bandsaw all set up. I've got my gap here just large enough. I can get in there. I actually have a little bit of wiggle room. I actually need to drop that a little bit. So I've got very little wiggle room in here, which is great because it prevents the bandsaw blade from walking all over the place. So we're good. I've checked tension. Tension is good on the blade. I'm plugged in, ready to go. Um, this one doesn't have a dust catcher, so I can't hook up my shop back to it, which is fine. Now my concern here hmm, 
is this is oak. And this is a dense oak. I wish you could actually feel this. This is a super dense oak that I picked up. So it's probably going to be very slow because we're going to have to be working very carefully with the bandsaw because I don't want to break the blade because guess what? I only have one blade and I really don't want to go buy another blade. So hopefully this will go okay. If not, we're going to have to go buy another blade. But we'll just go slow, be careful. Hopefully everything will work out really well. Well, there we go. We have ourselves one stegosaurus. Very ugly stegosaurus, mind you. I mean, these are terrible. We're going to take that out with uh, just some sandpaper, files, what have you. But <clears throat> there's our basic stegos shape with a little, a little punch in him for when we, we do the hole saw. So now that's one. Got one more to go. Second, Stego.
Well, there we go. Two Stegosaurus. They're not the same, but they're pretty close. Now we have to try to make them the same. Ish. I really wish you could actually smell this. The, the smell of, mm, of oak, cut, fresh cut oak, wonderful. Um, I love those kind of hardwoods. All right, so we have to get our stegos. Move. We have to get our stegos into some semblance of stegosaurusness. Um, which they are sort of already in that semblance. Um, but we need to smooth them a little bit. And there's, there's definitely spots that are, that are rougher than we would like. So to do that, one thing, I've got a, a bench vise, which we're going to use. But I don't want to just put these things in a bench vise, because the bench vise is steel. And it's going to grab onto this, obviously, and damage the wood. So now comes the game of find Dare's extra wood. Okay, so we've got our Stegosaurus locked in, and I have plenty of, of tools to get this done. I'm going to start with just do a little bit of hand shaping of this guy. And let's get this guy. Definitely a Stegosaurus-esque shape, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit deep, but that's fine. It's actually not sharp. We got some ridges all the way down to the little Stego back. Okay, we're not looking for anything super perfect. Again, it's some baby toy. So that's pretty darn good. We'll, we'll smooth up the tail and some of these transitions in here a little bit later. I just want to make sure we got good stego ridges going on up there, but we do. That's one. Now for stego number two. Well, I'm making a quick jig so that when I put the dinos in the drill press, I can actually hold them in whatever position I want. So what I'm going to do, I'll take this piece of board, right? I'll pocket screw this one onto it in a fixed position. I'm going to use a bunch of pocket screws. And then this one, I'll just clamp onto it so I can clamp the dyno between the two. Then this is cl clampable onto the, the platform of my drill press. So, one hopes this works. Okay, now to figure out how to make sure we're centered here. That's a nice random number there, dear. Hey. And then later I'll just salvage this. Because. There we go. Simple enough. So there we go. We've got that. Get crap on that, but that's all right. So then we take our dinos, we'll line them up so that the, uh, the drill bit goes in properly. Which means we're going right about like that. There. Ooh. That's not going to work. Come on. Any time now. There we go. There. So then I clamp this down to the board. And then when I draw this 
straight down the dyno butt. Hmm. We're going to go straight in and hopefully everything will work out. If not, I can make another dyno. I think that would be fine. Because we got we got room on either side, yeah. Because I think this one is going to be too small. Because, I mean, I guess the question is, how big are baby hands when they when they are born? Like, are they are they like that big? Are they that big? They, I don't know. So I'm going to go with. Das's original design. We're going to go get a bigger hole saw so that we can uh, have a bigger hole in, that, in our dinosaur. So we'll do that and then we need to cut some of this to make the rattles but we'll do that later because we'll just run this through the, something like this through the bandsaw. We'll true it up a little bit. Maybe not. Um, drill some holes in it and round it out. The rounding it out might be interesting, but we're going to see what happens. And then we got to drill our dino's butt. Dino butt. And then I think, I think we're relatively far along. I got to pick up linseed oil, a new hole saw. I think that's it.